Hey guys, it's your favorite Dynabot here, and welcome to another Horrific Truth, and today we have Mewtwo versus Frieza. And I think this one should have been addressed by me a long time ago when I started this series, but now I have the time, and I finished Rainbow Rocket. So without further ado, let's start off. You guys know how we do it here. We get right into the meat and potatoes when it comes to the scaling. And we'll decide who is really overkill for the other person. So with Black Frieza, or Frieza in general, after training in the hyperbolic hood chamber, he achieved the power of blackness. You see, with this power of blackness, he was able to one-shot Goku, Vegeta, and Gas. You see, these guys have become the strongest beings in their universe. The strongest mortals, I should say, in their universe, right? And I think this would also upscale Frieza from a lot of the Dragon Ball villains in the past. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? He should upscale Goku Black, who's able to rip through dimensions like it's nothing. He should upscale characters like Jiren and obviously God of Destruction Topo. Now, again, it is very different with those two because we know they aren't allowed to kill in the tournament of power as our other characters but hey it is what it is here he's features to still upscale them he also should upscale gogeta and broly who are much stronger and much more powerful than those two at their full power and those two were actually able to punch themselves or at least punch each other i should say so hard that they broke the boundaries of their universe. Keep in mind the Dragon Ball universe has multiple layers of space and time, even with realms that are simply, what's the word I'm looking for? Having no form of space and time. And Frieza should casually be able to destroy this as of the scaling of him being above the clash of with Goku and Beerus in their Super Saiyan God forms. So yeah, Frieza should be into the high complex multiversal tiers of power with him obviously having a plethora of key ranged abilities from the death ball supernova the death crash he has the death saucer the death beam the death beam barrage you know the light cage or cage of light death and stuff like that albeit it does take some toll on his stamina frieza has actually gone to I guess you could say the lengths to prepare his golden form and possibly even his black form as well to basically handle the strenuous or stressful conditions here. Plus, his biology makes him superior to a lot of beings in the Dragon Ball verse here, as he's able to survive planetary explosions with only just half of his body. And he also has things like telekinesis, which allow him to hold opponents that are much stronger than him, like him being able to temporarily hold God of Destruction Topo, him being able to use this to throw rocks around the battlefield, or lift up giant, at least, um, you know, crater-sized rocks and stuff, and just throw them at his opponents. And obviously, he named it General Mountain, right? So, um, obviously, we got to give our respects to General Mountain here. He died fighting Goku. Yeah. So, with all that being said here, I think it's very simple. And I think it's very straightforward with Frieza. He's in the high, complex, multiversal characters. But you could possibly argue outerversal like I did with Goku in my Community Demon video. Getting him with characters like Zamasu or, you know, saying he scales above the likes of Infinite Zamasu, who is becoming Law and Order. So, with that out of the way, let's address Mewtwo. So, Mewtwo, the ultimate creation. Yeah, this one's gonna be, um... This is a bit of a fun one for me, you know? I've actually got to relook at some of the old scaling i did for mewtwo and again i had to re-watch the likes of rainbow rocket and i finally finished it dear god that thing is long for no reason at all and um i'm actually impressed i really am i really am you see in rainbow rocket giovanni puts together every villain from across the you know um pokemon history here and he's the strongest of these villains here meaning he's above the likes of you know team plasma team red and blue and you know stuff like that so 
the thing about it is Mewtwo being the strongest of this group here would scale above the likes of these avatars of the creation trio, would scale above Xerneas and Evelto, who are the concepts of life and death. And again, there's also, you know, um, Dialga and Palkia, who are the literal embodiment of space and time itself. Meaning that they would be outer. Yeah, so, um, it, it's crazy, it's crazy. Now you might say, oh, well, how does that apply Legendary to Mewtwo and stuff? Because, again, he's stronger than them. Giovanni is noted to be the strongest boss in Rainbow Rocket. You actually fight these guys in a certain order, with Giovanni being the strongest of this group here. You see, Mewtwo was created to be the most powerful Pokemon and in Rainbow Rocket, Giovanni actually just achieves that goal with him conquering the world here. And this also would mean he would have fought a lot of Earth's based legendary Pokemon and would have beaten them. Like, there's, there's no if and or buts about it. He would have beaten the likes of the legendary dogs, legendary birds, Lugia, Ho Oh, and so on and so forth. And again, scaling above the likes of the avatars of the Creation Shield, Palkia, and Dialga here, when they're actually able to destroy the concept of spirit, like, it's it, it's funny because, again, they're able to destroy all this, the concept of spirit, mind, and will itself. They're able to destroy all of this. And Mewtwo scales above this because of the Rainbow Rocket scaling and how the game works. But, wait a minute, there's... There's more to it, right? There's obviously more with the Pokemon verse as a whole. You see, Pokemon possesses infinite universes with infinite possibilities. Meaning that everything that these Pokemon can do, or everything that pretty much happens, is canon to that verse. There's always an infinite number of possibilities within that verse. For example, do you know in the manga, Ash actually caught the Spearow he met and involved it all the way into a Fero? Yeah, and that thing is broken too, so I suggest y'all go look that up. But back to Mewtwo himself here. Mewtwo has actually been able to fight and actually overwhelm Deoxys, has been able to stalemate the likes of Darkrai, the living embodiment of nightmares for the pokemon verse meaning that he's literally fighting the literal embodiment or little dark embodiment of imagination because again you know Cresselia represents you know the good dreams and stuff like that why dark cry represents nightmares of the entire verse here even having a dream world that he's able to manipulate it alongside Cresselia. they're even able to travel back and forth through time as they fight Again, that's some ridiculous level of speed feats as well, which also would put Mewtwo at faster than light to inaccessible levels of speed here. You also have the sheer fact that he's able to fight against the likes of Zygarde, who's the living embodiment of balance itself here. The same um, Zygarde that's able to balance out the literal concepts of life and death. Like, he's able to balance these things. And again, he's able to suppress them as well. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Zygarde is also able to maintain balance in all of these universes. Because keep in mind, again, these Pokemon do have to exist in every other verse. Meaning that there is possible that they also have true forms, like the Creation Trio. But again, they all do exist in these other verses in order to maintain a level of, whatchamacallit, a level of, um, I guess you could say an order or structure for each of these verses. You can't have life in one universe without death here. There's no, there's no possible way about it. These Pokemon have to maintain balance. And again, Mewtwo is a Pokemon that can fight against these guys and beat them he would have had to beat them in order to conquer the entire world like it's it's pretty simple in all honesty but again let's continue here Mewtwo possesses a plethora of psychic abilities because again he is a psychic type you see Mewtwo can use telepathy telekinesis psychokinesis confusion and various forms of telepathy communication controlling so on and so forth here and Mewtwo can use this to even the point where 
He's able to one-shot opponents like Articuno. He's able to ragdoll other Pokemon with ease. Even being able to just lift up Pokemon that are... That honestly should be much stronger than him. Like, for example, Tyranitar, Entei, Raikou, Suicune. And I think you guys understand it here. These Pokemon all should be stronger than he is. And yet he's able to use Telekinesis to hold them in place like it's absolutely ridiculous here even causing explosions and stuff like that and again he would also exceed a lot of the psychic power of other pokemon like alec like even mega alakazam and mega gardevoir who both can use their psychic powers to create and even merge entire universes with other universes meaning they're able to merge infinite realities and even create their own infinite realities and keep in mind as well mewtwo or shadow mewtwo which is simply just a, a much dark a darker version of mewtwo is also able to create his own universe all right with stars solar systems and stuff like that he's able to create all of that and destroy it with ease which again makes a whole lot of sense here and then there's the sheer fact Mewtwo can also just use other attacks. He can use Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse, and many other things here. I mean, the sheer fact that, again, Giovanni made this dude with the intent for him to be the strongest Pokemon. And then in Rainbow Rocket, it's confirmed that he was able to conquer the world with Mewtwo. The entire Pokemon world. Despite the fact that it had all those legendary pokemon that would have responded to a another legendary pokemon going rogue and this means he would have conquered all the other regions i, I mean what you, you think kanto's just the only part of the world I, I mean come on here guys so yeah um i think that really wraps up for mewtwo and just kind of showcases how powerful he is he definitely could be the strongest pokemon on the planet if giovanni was able to harness that power and again in rainbow rocket he did but let's talk about some of the counter arguments i know some of you guys are going to use here now the first part about this is bobbity's controlling and how dragon ball characters can scale above a person's hacks if they are more powerful now while the tournament of power did kind of take a i guess you could say a nosedive to this with people having hacks that can just simply surpass an opponent's power for example dispo speed was able to just blindly blitz through hits time skip hit not being stronger than goku at the start of the fight but still was able to keep up because of his time skip abilities even when goku ramped up his power to kaioken hit had an ability to simply adjust himself to that so um yeah it's very 50 50 with dragon ball Plus, with Bobbity's mind control, he was controlling people that were as round or if not slightly weaker than Super Perfect Cell. Or slightly stronger, excuse me. With Dabra stating that he was, sorry, Goku stating that Dabra was stronger than Cell. Cell being able to destroy the entire solar system. And again, Vegeta and Goku would have been surpassed. It, it even states that Vegeta let Bobby control him. So he could unlock his full potential, which is what Bobby actually does. He doesn't give Vegeta, you know, Super Saiyan 2 or nothing like that. He just simply unlocks Vegeta's hidden potential. Which, again, should mean Vegeta should have been able to turn Super Saiyan 3, but I, I, it is what it is. It is what it is here. But again, with Mewtwo, um, yeah, if Giovanni was able to pretty much help these other leaders gain access and even help control their legendary pokemon what do you think that mm -hmm. says about what mewtwo could do to frieza i mean he could use his telekinesis to blow him up ragdoll him throw him around even if we give frieza the universal treatment like i did goku in my community debunk giving him the same way that he should scale above merge zamasu or sorry infinite zamasu you still have beings that vastly out hacks, out class, and would be able to do the same thing to that Zeno did to Infinite Zamasu. And Mewtwo 
with the Rainbow Rocket, all right, with the Rainbow Rocket storyline and stuff like that, would exceed their power. Because again, in that same story, he was able, Giovanna was able to use Mewtwo in order to actually gain control of these other legendary Pokemon for the rest of the members of Rainbow Rocket. So yeah, um, while, you know, um, Frieza is powerful, and, you know, he went into the hyperbolic hood chamber to gain his power of blackness. He isn't in the same ballpark as Mewtwo. Mewtwo is stronger, faster, has a lot more haxes, and has a lot more ways to put down Frieza than Frieza has to put him down. So, that's going to be all today, you guys. Please comment down below. Like and subscribe and share it to your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you all have a blessed day.